Perched on the shores of the Genkai Sea, Munakata's sprawling landscapes and bustling ports have long been revered through songs, legends, and folklore. Throughout history, the city has served as an important gateway for trade between China, Japan, and Korea, and today still wears the remnants of its ancient culture with pride. Munakata is a place of great national importance to Japan. For one, because it's thought to be the origin of the country's indigenous religion, Shintoism. Shinto practitioners are polytheistic, meaning they worship multiple gods or spirits who are believed to inhabit all things, particularly animals and other things in nature. Take the Munakata Taisha, for example, a set of three shrines situated around the city that celebrate three of its most venerated goddesses. These three were sisters and were thought to be the daughters of Ematerasu Omakami, goddess of the sun, and Susano Ono Mikoto, the storm god which is where the city of Munakata is said to get its name. Each goddess has their own Shinto shrine hidden away in three different parts of the prefecture, one on the Kyushu mainland, the second at the foot of Mount Mitake on the island of Oshima, and the third on the uninhabited island of Okinoshima in the middle of the Genkai Sea. Actually, not quite uninhabited. Okinoshima has just one single resident, a solitary Shinto monk who's posted out on the island to maintain the grounds and perform important rituals. No one else is allowed access, which, if anything, only adds to the allure. But beyond the tradition and mythology for which Munakata is famed, something else is beginning to happen here. Something that's already shifting the dynamic of this historic coastal city. That something is adventure sports. The city of Munakata is built around an estuary, a sea inlet which both shelters it from the squalls of the open ocean and allows easy access to the water. In ancient times, this made Munakata an ideal place to set up ports that served the trade routes between Japan and the greater Asian continent. Today, you can get out and explore the estuary yourself on a stand-up paddleboard from Kantai Bagus and discover the landscape that those traders and fishermen used to boat down every day for thousands of years. And speaking of Munakata's water sports, there's plenty more where that came from. Nick, this was an awesome trip down the yeah. river. Uh, just coming off here and now looking at the beach, mm. this is like a big surf culture. It is, it is. Yeah, Kyushu has a surf culture for sure. It's a winter season normally, but we're coming off the end of a typhoon here and they're having a good time today. Yeah, there are 20, 30 surfers out there. Yeah. And, and then now I can see the islands much clearer. Yeah. Yeah. So you made a reference to the trading route. That's right. Oshima over there and a smaller island here in front of us. And we just came out the river. Munakata's adventurous spirit doesn't just live on the water. It also sits on four legs. Horse legs, to be exact. The age-old practice of horseback archery has been around for thousands of years and was traditionally used for warfare and hunting in Japanese culture. In recent times, horseback archery has evolved into a recreational sport, at once an homage to its ancient origins and an action-packed activity to capture a modern audience. In Japan, it's called Yabusame. The aim of the game is to shoot three arrows at wooden targets as you gallop full pelt down a narrow track that's about 250 meters long, chanting the mantra Inyo Inyo, meaning yin and yang, or light and darkness, at the top of your voice. Simple, no? As it turns out, not really. The skills needed to maintain enough stability on top of a galloping horse to actually shoot an arrow accurately enough to hit a target is a lot. It takes years and years of training for these samurais to be able to do what they do. It's such an art, in fact, that Japanese language has a phrase denoted to it, kiyuba no michi, or the way of the bow and horse. Thank you. 
If you visit Munakata around the beginning of October, you'll catch one of the city's most anticipated events of the year, the Munakata Taisha Autumn Festival. Visually stunning and wound up in all kinds of deeply important history for the local community, the festivities center around the three Munakata goddesses. On the first day, known as the Miare Festival, a pair of ships sail across the harbor carrying shrines of the goddesses from Okinoshima and Oshima. Hundreds of smaller boats carrying festival goers, worshipers, and local residents follow in their wake, jostling to get a good position next to the captain's ships. Once they reach land, the parade brings the two sisters' shrines to the third shrine in Kyushu, where they're reunited with their mainland sister. They'll stay here for the remainder of the festival, before being brought back to their original resting places. Throughout the weekend, the festivities ebb and flow as waves of visitors gather around the various performances, parades, and ceremonies. From traditional dances and artwork to fast-paced adrenaline sports like yabusame, it's fascinating to witness the blend of Munakata's old and new, and to see how the people here both passionately honor their heritage and embrace modern innovations. And if anybody embodies these sentiments, it's Munakata local Yoshihiro Suzuki, a rugby-playing Shinto priest. I played rugby as a high school student, and still do when I can. I admire that every player has a different role to play within a rugby team to make it function. Fifteen people with unique skills and different jobs on the pitch, all working together towards the same goal in unison, to win the game. That is what I truly like about rugby. As you move through the festival, there really is a sense of things waiting to be discovered here. Like the closer you look, the more you see. It seems like every corner you turn might reveal something completely unexpected, something truly unique. If you're ambitious enough to climb up the 119 stairs to the top of the Taisha forest, you'll be rewarded with just that. Under the moonlight, hidden away in the dense grove of trees, you'll find the spellbinding festival finale. Poetry, dancing, singing, flames of bonfires flickering in the inky darkness. Maybe it's the forest, the earth, the blazing fires, the vibrancy of the music and dancers. But even as a visitor, even without the ancestral ties that these men and women have to Munakata, it's hard not to be drawn in by the energy of this place, these people. But that festival, magical as it is, only happens once a year. So where can we find adventure in Munakata the rest of the time? On the beach, of course. Beach culture is alive and kicking in Munakata, with volleyball, beach rugby, paddleboarding, and even high action water sports like surfing and kiteboarding are all on the menu here. And it's not just a locals thing or a Shinto priest thing. All kinds of people travel from around Japan to make use of these perfect conditions. In fact, Munakata is now the destination of choice for the Japanese Professional Kiteboard Association's final event of the season, the Genkai Nada Championship. 
time your visit to Munakata right, and you could catch some of the country's most insanely skilled kiteboarders pulling out all the stops for the big air and freestyle competitions, right here on Shiraishihama Beach. You know what really hits the spot after a long day on the beach? Sake, Japan's famous rice wine. And as it happens, there's a wonderfully underrated little place in Fukutsu, Munakata's old town, where you can visit Ai no Ye, a perfectly preserved 18th century traditional house and venture next door to the sake brewery, to taste some of the real stuff. But don't drink too much of it, because there's more exploring to do. In 2019, Japan made history by becoming the first ever Asian country to host the Rugby World Cup, which brought 20 of the best rugby teams in the world to the country. Impressively, Japan's national team have competed in every Rugby World Cup since the inaugural tournament in 1987, and are so far the only team to reach the Rugby World Cup through Asian regional qualifying. The competition was held over 12 stadiums throughout Japan, with the Fukuoka Hakata no Mori Stadium picked to host three of the 45 games. Munakata's own team, the Sanex Blues, can boast some top players on their books over the years, like Graham Bashop and current head coach of Japan's national team, Jamie Joseph. But it was Sanex Blues player Karn Hesketh who's really gone down in history. He was the driving force behind what's come to be regarded as one of the greatest upsets ever in Rugby World Cup history. Tatakawa. Murphy! Here we go! Hiskus! Come on, Hiskus! In at the corner when Hiskus to steal the game for Japan. One of the most famous victories in the history of sports, I'd go as far as saying, not just in the game of rugby union, and victory it will be for the cherry blossoms. With 84 minutes on the clock in the last play of the game, Hesketh scored the winning try for Japan against South Africa in a 34-32 victory. Come on, man. Thanks for uh, welcoming me here on the field. I mean, super exciting. It's Rugby World Cup in Japan. Uh, first time in Asia in history. Um, how much does it make you feel Obviously, your history with the Rugby World Cup 2015 in England. What are the emotions having it now here in your adopted home country? Um, I think it's marvellous. Um, you know, like, we always wanted, thinking back then, you know, like, what, what is it going to be like? And now that it's here, I've been to a couple of games already, and, like, the fans, the Japanese public, they're just right into it, supporting. You know, they've got all different jerseys, all teams. I don't know how they pick their teams they're going for, but um, they've always, they're always supporting a side at the games and the stadiums are packed, you know? So it's, it's quite a, a good atmosphere, I think, at the moment. Munakata is also home to Global Arena, a 10,000 capacity stadium on the outskirts of the city, which hosted the second Asian Rugby Exchange Festival organized by World Rugby, Asia Rugby, and Japan Rugby Football Union. 16 under-14 teams from the Asia region, as well as local teams, compete in X-Rugby, a new and lower committed format of rugby that's played 7-on-7 seven seven on a half-sized standard pitch. Teams from Bangladesh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Nepal, Thailand, Taiwan, Macau, and Japan took part. And though the competition level was fierce as anything, it really felt as though the underlying sentiment of the event was that of inclusivity, friendliness, and team participation. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I saw them coming. <laughs> Good one, mate. <laughs> well done, my friend. Whether it's on a pitch, in a forest, or at a beach, 
it's clear that Munakata's adventurous spirit runs deep. It's a rare thing to discover a place that can seamlessly marry together New Age action sports with subtle, deeply significant thousand-year-old tradition. But that's what it feels like here. To discover Munakata is to discover samurai, sake, and sunsets, surf on the shores of the Genkai Sea and Asia's ancient trade routes, kiteboarding, and the kindness of the local people.